obviously the court heard the testimony in this case, so I will keep it brief. However, I think the egregious and aggravating circumstances in this particular case are the way that the defendant met the victim. He originally meets him while he's in a position of trust as a substitute teacher. He used grooming and manipulation tactics with this victim, and the court was able to hear that specifically throughout the course of the controlled call in which time after time he's trying to get the victim to come in and talk to him. He uses religion. He uses the lack of the victim's father figure in his life, continuously saying that you call me dad, you call me your father, I call you my son, I love you. He has a position of trust with this victim's grandmother. She thinks that he is just mentoring this child, helping him with his homework. He buys him things. All of these are the epitome and typical things that we see in grooming and manipulation. And unfortunately, he's the epitome of what you consider a sexual predator. All of the things that he has done for this community leading up to this action do not negate his actions. If anything, he used his position of trust throughout the community to gain access to children. And that makes him the scariest type of predator because he is somebody that you do trust with your children, and you would never expect him to commit an act like this. A jury of his peers has found him guilty of sexual battery. This isn't a consensual act. The jury found that he forced this child into the sexual act, and the state would argue that 30 years is absolutely the appropriate sentence for the sexual predator. Thank you. Your Honor, I pray the court will indulge me this opportunity to have my comments on the record. On the outside were smiles, but on the inside, a seriously troubled young man fighting the demons of adolescence without the benefit of close peers or a male family member. Through it all, hatred and anger would be the most common response I should have, but then I'm not common. A lifetime of helping kids to now be convicted of hurting one is inconceivable. My name, my reputation, my life has been forever destroyed by actions of a young man with issues, but from, excuse me, not by the actions of a young man with issues, but from the adults, the professionals, who followed the lie instead of pursuing the truth. If there was ever a time when a polygraph should be administered to both the victim and the accused, this is one. Even though they're inadmissible in court, it is greatly desired in the court of public opinion. I will endeavor to undergo a polygraph for the benefit of those who have stood by me and to bring out the truth. I may be going to jail for something I did not do, but I know that there's opportunity still within our justice system to appeal in the process, and that is what I intend to do. I thank you for your time. One of the confounding things about human nature is that either by societal upbringing or being hardwired this way, we as human beings want to say about another human being, they're either a good person or a bad person. The reality is, and this court was a testament on a day-to-day basis, is that very decent qualities and very dark qualities often reside within the same human being. And it makes it hard to look at and hard to figure out. But nonetheless, sir, having accepted the jury's verdict, finding you guilty of sexual battery, and accept their verdict, adjudicate you guilty of sexual battery, applying that statute to the jury's verdict, I'm going to go ahead and designate you as a sexual predator, and I'm going to sentence you to 12 years in Florida State Prison. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman.